The last transformation that we're going to look at is rotation, so let's do a quick review. Um, and remember that a rotation is a turn. It's when a figure is turned about a fixed point called the <clears throat> excuse me, center of rotation. And usually that's the origin, but it isn't all it doesn't always have to be. And the number of degrees a figure is rotated is called the angle of rotation. Now the notation is using a capital R. And the subscript for that R, we usually have the uh, angle of rotation and the center of rotation. Now if it's the origin, a lot of times they'll just leave it off. Now, one of the things that you have to remember with rotations is when the degrees of your angle of rotation are positive, then you are rotating counterclockwise, just backwards of what you think it should be. Okay, some of the things that you might need when you're looking at your homework is some vocab about polygons. When you see the word regular, like a regular triangle, a regular, um, uh, in this case, octagon. What that means is a figure where all the side lengths and all the vertex angles are congruent. So in this particular um, figure, we have eight sides. So if I put a point at the center of that octagon and drew lines out to its vertices, I would get eight congruent triangles. And I know that the central angle of each of those triangles is exactly one-eighth of 360 because they're all congruent. And a circle is 360. So if I di divide 360 by eight, I know that each one of those central angles is 45 degrees. Now that I know that, I can answer this question. What angle of rotation maps A onto F? Remember, maps means moves. So that just means how many times would I have to turn that 45 degrees to move A to where F is? Well, as you can see, I'm going to have to turn it one, two, three times because I'm going counterclockwise. So I'm going to take 40 times 5 times 3. So the angle of rotation to map A to F would be 135 degrees. I hope that helps you with your homework. Now another thing that we want to talk about before I, I cut you loose is uh, angle of rotation if we're going just one quadrant. As you can see, if I put a point at my center of rotation, which is my origin, and I drew a line to point A on my original figure, which is yellow, and point A prime on my image, if I measured that angle made by those two lines, I would get exactly 90 degrees. So when you rotate from one quadrant to the second quadrant, quadrant bleh, can't say that, it's a 90 degree angle always. Now on the second figure, I've gone from quadrant one, two, three, four to quadrant two. And again, if I put a point from the origin to A and the origin to A prime, I would get a straight line. This is a 180 degree angle. So the rotation of this figure is 180 degrees. And anytime you go over two quadrants, it's going to be 180 degrees. These are very common rotations. And I have this kind of figure that I think this is going to be helpful. It's on your notes. So if you go over one quadrant, it's 90 degrees. If you go over two quadrants, it's 180 degrees. If you go over three quadrants, it's 270 degrees. And remember, our quadrants are one, two, three, four labeled counterclockwise. So I think that will help you with your rotations. The last thing that we want to look at before you do your, uh, your homework is composition transformations. Now in Math Excel, Excel, you will not be doing composition transformations, but I do have a sheet in your teacher talk or application where you will be doing those. 
That is a series of transformations that are performed in a specific order to create a new transformation. And remember, we use this open circle to indicate a composition. Now, when you see translate 1 to the right, 5 up, after a reflection over y equals x, you know that you have to do the reflection first. So whatever is mentioned second, you do first. Whatever is mentioned first, you do second. It is just backwards of what you think it should be. So be very careful of that when you're doing your composition transformations. Okay, now, in certain cases, a combination of transformations may be able to be renamed using a single transformation. Like, look at this example. I have an image in, I mean, a pre-image in quadrant one. And based on my trans, uh, my, uh, sorry, eh, my composition transformation over here, I first have to reflect it over the y-axis because I have to do what's second first. And then I'm going to Ref, uh, did I say reflect? I hope I said reflect over the y-axis. And then I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. And when I look at my image and my pre-image, after those two reflections, I realize I could just say this was a rotation of 180 degrees. In fact, any translation or rotation can be expressed as a composition of two reflections. So, here's a couple that you should be familiar with. A composition of reflections over two parallel lines is going to be equivalent to a translation. So if I have these two lines, line A and line B, and I first reflect my triangle over line A, and then I reflect that same triangle over line B, that is exactly the same thing as doing a translation of that triangle twice the distance between the parallel lines. So I have five units between the parallel lines and when I reflected it twice, the triangle twice, it's the same thing as translating that triangle ten units to the right. Alright, so make sure you put that in your notes. Another one composition transformation is the composition of reflection over two intersecting lines is going to be equivalent to a rotation. So I've got these two lines A and B if you look at the diagram and they intersect at point P and I am supposed to reflect this over line A first because it's mentioned second and then I'm going to reflect this triangle over line B. And when I look at it, it's the exact same thing as rotating that triangle twice the angle measurement, twice, two times the degrees of the angle formed by the intersecting line. And if that doesn't make sense, I want you to really look at the diagram because I think this is an awesome diagram, that's why I included it on here. It explains it pretty, uh, pretty well. Now notice I circled their rotation uh, notation because they put their center of rotation first and their angle degrees second. And that's okay, you can do that. Okay, I think that you have what you need for compositions uh, you may want to get in there and try them before we have our teacher talk and then you gotta have some questions and if you do then we can work on them together I think you're ready for your rotation homework.